quite sort of a, you know, it's just a lot better than the summer months. It's still spring. Daylight always makes it a lot more easy. wearing this next one. So we should have a place to ourselves along here. See where the tide's been. We'll just fish till we're out of bait and that's the end of it. So I managed to snap my first bit of gear off, got on the first tree, so a lot of sand up here, so it might be, quite, the stones might be exposed, so that's a bit of an issue. Got 15 pound line on a very stiff rod, doesn't help. I did have 30 on it. I've got some quite sand in there, so, but what I think that the real cause of it is, is the 15 pound line on a stiff rod and using grip wires. See, so it digs in and almost out and then just ping, pings at the knot. So that gear, I might be able to retrieve it at low water, I might be able to. Um, or I could pull it in, drag it in. Um, so I don't have to buy myself some new sort of um, breakaway leads are the answer, which have got, um, you know, they're breakout leads. So they, they, they break out if they're the fixed wires you probably need minimum 20 pound line if, if, if the lead's got really digging in. So just to break it out, you see. And lead lifters are good to help it to keep it up. But, um, 
Yeah, nice bow in the line there. What I'm going to do, because the wind's stiff northeast, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a nice bit of fulfilment. The wind's all around the mic and everything else you're probably away. So, what I'll do, because we're getting the shelter from this sea defence, what we'll do is the tide ebbs out more. So we'll just go through that little gap there, over there. We'll go through there and we'll just we'll tuck in behind this revetment here. And we'll get a bit of well, uh, a bit of wind shelter for the camera from that side. Doesn't really matter where you fish. Groins are a good, good fish, fishy places actually. But the tide, the tide's doing this when it's ebbing, it's going that way. When it floods, it goes that way. See, so we're ebbing, so it's pulling our gear, ebbing around. But it's not a strong tide today anyway. I'm not expecting fish to be that hot, but.
sort of a tide it is by looking at the moon, look. It's a half new moon. So not conducive for brilliant fishing, I wouldn't have thought, because there's not so much pull. But it won't go it won't go out, it won't come up so much, it won't go down so much. But you know. They say some, some people like fishing um, rough ground over sort of smaller tides. But the rough ground I fish, there's bloody brown crabs on there, they just snip my bloody snood off. Bloody things. Hold a few fish though. Sailing boat out there. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Sound right, boy.
sound right, boy. Sound right, boy. Size two, nice and small, small hook. We've got a inverted bait clip, 15 pound, 50 pound, 20 pound on for a fish, and we snag in the bottom. This will break clear, this will catch and break clear. That's it, and we'll cast it out like that. Right, 
lines was given by the electric company. So it's 48 hours ago. of the waves, just beautiful, so beautiful. Right, so we just turned up. The high water mark was about here somewhere, so it's just been going down a bit. There's a wreck out there. Um, that was a sailboat which got washed up, washed up in October. So with that, you might be, that's, that's actually moved, that mast has moved, that's further down. So it's moved up. So there might be, it's the first time I've been on the beach this year, so there might be some snags so This there. is what we got. These are the lures. I've got some 15 pound amnesia. I'm gonna use that for my shock leader. And because the water's mucky, I'm gonna use that as my, um, my trace line as well. But that should be good even if the water was clear. That's good stuff that is. Nice and subtle. And I've got some, as you can see, I've got some bright, luminous lures, things to try. Um, what else have we got? This one's got some little patterns on it. I've got a popper, probably not going to go on the poppers today. Okay, so we've rigged up. Eight pound braid. Um, what else have we got? We've got the lure clipped in on the, um, on the clip. I've got 15 pound amnesia. I've got a swivel and a, um, split ring actually on the rapala and I've just tied a um, my shock leader on for the traditional shock leader knot. And remember to lift the rod tip up as it's coming in the shallows. Don't want to blunt the hooks, I don't have a lot of hooks. Spare hooks. The rack at it. Get the line lay. Got a little bit of an issue with the wind. Now this is quite a um, what am I saying? Not a very this is only about 13 grams so i'm usually used to casting a metal but good for fishing good for fishing close in so we just swapped over to a slightly heavier lure because what we were casting there was just it's not really performing that one in the wind so we've got an alibaba special 20 gram. 
and I've got some of my luminous paint on it. Hello everybody. We're on our way to um, just change gear. On our way to um, get some peeler crab. We go down the local river and just see if we can get some. We've got half a tail of mackerel. As you can see, glorious weather. Um, didn't see much out there, but I've just put my pot just down here to see if we can get a few crabs. Got half a mackerel in there. Tide's coming in. Um, yeah, so we just sort of can you see that. I can see a tiny little, little tiny little bird there, a little beak. So it's definitely a seabird because it's got the beak to get all the worms and stuff. There he is. Don't know, is it a turn? Right, wind in the face, seven knots. Got a white tyser on. And the beach has changed a bit from last year. It's, it's a bit shallower. But we're not getting a great distance with this, but. lifting the lure up as we come close into the sand so don't want to blunt the trebles and all we're doing we're just flicking it out there's a wreck out there see them posts I'm not letting it sink right to the bottom it's not that deep here because it is snaggy and that's why you do get a few fish here so it's a bit early the water's a bit mucky, but when you've got a lure like this, anything can happen. Look at that. So, we're just trying to get out as far as we can without sort of most fish are close in. And it can happen right out of the blue on any cast at any angle. I generally um, cast in this sort of 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock quadrant. And I just move along the beach a little bit as I go. But there's a little taster. So we're just only using eight pound braid. So, I've got a sort of a, a leader on, so it takes a lot of the shock out of the cast. So, some of these waves have got a bit bigger just recently. Got down here and they weren't that big, but they've sort of got a bit, well, good, good job I put my boots on. And all we're doing, now, it has been cold. This has been the coldest April in 60 years and the sea round here is cold however bass feed apparently in eight degrees well that's what i've got here and i know i know there's one or two fish about because they've been coming to bait i had i had nine small ones on lugworm two weeks ago just after it got heated up we had a we had a couple of days 23 degrees and as soon as the water warmed up a bit they were on it so anyway the, the water it does look murky and it wouldn't be my first choice for lure fishing however however they should be able to see this they should be able to see that if they're there so we just Each cast I try and um, just check the rod tip that the braid is, um, or the mono, is not caught round one of the rings or something like that, because that's enough to snap eight pound braid off. And there's nothing worse than having to retie on and lose a good lure. And 
generally not a lot of hurry. Don't gain anything by just sort of being too eager. So we're approaching the good time. And it's I'd say we're on it about now. So really I, I don't want to wind too fast and sometimes I find just let the lure just sort of sway and let, let, let a wave pick it up almost surf it let it surf it in a bit you know don't wind too fast but I would expect to get one just in close here really with the wave action the way it is but it could happen anyway it could happen anyway do with a longer rod really but I do like this little rod very light very light little 2000 reel so I don't get tired in Australia I used to spin with a 12 foot Daiwa Heartland rod and I was younger then, and I stupidly brought a 8,000 size reel. But bugger that, was to, that cast a long way out. But I get tired after half an hour. So. Could have been with a 4,000, but. I think this ratio is 6 to 1 on this one. It's like 89 centimetres of retrieve. So it's pretty quick. But you can see, judge how fast it's going. It's always winding fast this last little bit. I should see this lure. Definitely. Well. It's turned a lovely afternoon. So we're just... I've just, I've kept the same lure on. No. It's retrieving it back. And the lure was behaving differently, so I would say the tide has just changed. It's just starting to come in. So for me, if in these conditions, if we're going to get one, we'll get one of now. Wind's dropped off. It was a nice. The water's quite cold here. The crabs aren't peeling yet, but if they're going to find any food, they'll find it in tight to the shore. So. That's nah, just a question of whether there's any fish here or not. Pinging it out, pinging it out. <sighs> nice boat out there. So, what we got, I've had one on it before, boy well, that water is marky, marky water, but what do you do, what do you do, now it's snaggy here, so you don't want to leave it too long, 
to start retrieving. And sometimes you can wind in on a snag on the way in. Now, this is only a 14 gram lure. It's a metal. It will sink to the bottom, but it sinks ever so slowly. So even with like a real slow retrieve, it stays quite high up in the water. So this is a real, anyone who's fishing rough ground and want to fish metals, you can get away, you can get away, as long as there's not too windy in your face. And you can cast it out a bit, about 14 gram in a sort of a trout pattern. Trout salmon sort of pattern will 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 not you know snag to, snag up not from my experience anyway. So I like the metals because they um, they vibrate. You can get them in nice colours. I have most of my fish fish on these. You can there's all sorts of stuff you can buy now buy these sort of plastic worms with a, um, a weighted weedless hook and you can fish right in the snags with them but I always like hard bodied lures or metals because they, they give off a lot of vibration like a plug it sort of dives and wiggles and so not only you get a good sight and a, a good visual, you get a wiggly, and some of them have got little ball bearings inside. And they rattle as well. See, this, this metal's got a, um, this is actually a trout spinner. This is like for rainbow trout or something. And that's actually got white and pink. 14 gram. I just find a sort of a steady wafting sort of retrieve and even when a, a wave a wa oh god a wave sort of catches up to it so even just me there and that I stop retrieving and then I have to quickly quickly wind try and catch up with it. Want to snag it. Pound, I'd say. That's a nice fish. Draw the bloody
I baited it with mackerel, homemade pot, and um, I've been fishing a couple of times and it's, the crabs are here now because they've been starting to nick the bait. So, so I'm just trying to think which one it is. It's the one. It's not. It's not this one. It's not the next one. It's that one. See, and, it's, and I can now approach it. You see, I can now um, sort of approach it. There's enough water's gone out. High tide, low tide is in about 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes. So, up quite early this morning, we were up about, I don't know, just before four o'clock. I could probably have left it for another tide, but this time of year, with all this COVID stuff, it's quite touristy. And people do have a tendency to poke their noses in. Oh, what's this? And you can get people who do beach combing and they clean things and clean the groins and all sorts. So you can't leave it very long um, unsupervised. So yeah, I have to wait until the, the tide sort of almost covers it. But there's some sections of beach where no one hardly patrols, but access is a lot more difficult. Here's easier access, you see. And um, not so windy down here. And. Um, Let's just get to the um, get to the spot. It's, uh, got my knife. Just going to clear up the old rope. There's some seaweed along the um, uh, along the groins. Going to pack it in here, and I'm going to collect a couple of bottles of salt water. So hopefully, if there is a food crab. I made some adaptations to my pot as well, so they don't escape. But let's just hope there's some in there, and we'll just um, we'll pack the crabs inside here. Nice little organic chicken manure pellets. And what I'll do, I'll put them in the um, greenhouse and um, try and induce them to peel, and just sprinkle a bit of cold water on them, and just keep an eye on them. If they look like they, you know, ain't gonna peel or whatever, you can just freeze them down hard, and that's just be good enough for um, a smooth hound. But you really want them to peel for the bass, the old bass. So I'll catch you. Yeah. So picking your moments to have a fish, you um, you want to try and avoid weed. Um, weed is primarily from a, um, a stiff sort of storm and um, <clears throat> you want to sort of try and avoid real um, um, you know fishing just after a storm so Go. Which one is this? It's not this one, I don't think. A Canadian woman came up to me yesterday. Wanted to know what I was doing. I was like, ah, oh, just crab fishing, my lady. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's very difficult at the weekends to find anywhere out of the way. So, whether you're fishing or bait collecting or whatever. But no, it's no big issue. But um, you do just have to watch it sort of virtually get covered. So it's not that one, it's this next one. No, it's not, it's this one. No, it's not, it's this one, it's here. It's here, let's see if it's here. No, that's there. It's there. What have we got in there then? What have we got in there? Fucking dick all. Well, I go to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 